Okay, great. So I went and got some more orange juice. Who knows if I'm going to continue coughing. I apologize in advance because it's good when I cough because this stuff comes up. Anyways, I'll try to pull the microphone away. So now we're moving on to spotlights, which uh, sound very exciting. It says a spotlight is a light source that is located somewhere in the environment that instead of shooting light rays in all directions, only shoots them in a specific direction. The result is that only the objects within a certain radius of the spotlight's direction are lit and everything else stays dark. A good example of a spotlight would be a street lamp or a flashlight. A spotlight in OpenGL is represented by a world space position a direction and a cutoff angle that specifies the radius of the spotlight. For each fragment we calculate if the fragment is between the spotlight's cutoff directions, thus in its cone, and if so we lit the fragment accordingly. The following image gives you an idea of how a spotlight works. So light dir, spot dir, phi, theta, hmm. Okay, light dir is the vector pointing from the fragment to the light source. The fragment to the light source. Spot dir is the direction the spotlight is aiming at. Oh. Phi is the cutoff angle that specifies the spotlight's radius. Huh? The fragment. Okay. Light dir. I got that one wrong. Okay, so the cutoff angle specifies spotlight's radius. The cutoff angle? Everything outside this angle is not lit by the spotlight. Oh, so that would be this one. Okay. Theta, the angle between the light dir vector and the spot dir vector. The theta value should be smaller than phi value to be inside the spotlight. Right. That's weird. Why don't they use the same? for phi. Okay, so what we basically need to do is calculate the dot product, returns the cosine of the angle between two unit vectors, remember, between the light dir vector and the spot dir vector, and compare this with the cutoff angle. Now that you sort of understand what a spotlight is all about, we're going to create one in the form of a flashlight. Oh, so that's cool. It's going to do this for every fragment, and it's going to, oh, that's cool. That's fast to do that. That's fast. Okay. Flashlight. A flashlight is a spotlight located at the viewer's position and usually aimed straight ahead from the player's perspective. Basically, a flashlight is a normal spotlight, but with its position and direction continually updated based on the player's position and orientation. It says that my PC is potentially unprotected, so I'm going to scan. I'm going to scan. Okay, so the values we're going to need for the fragment shader are the spotlight's position vector, right, to calculate the light's direction vector, the spotlight's direction vector, and the cutoff angle. We can store these values in the light structure. Position, direction, cutoff. Right, okay. Next we pass the appropriate values to the shader. Okay, that's in the shader too. So let's put that in the shader. Where's the... Uh-huh, let's see, where am I at? Uh-huh. 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 Okay, light. Position, direction, float, cutoff. So, yeah, so that's not new, right? The position... Spotlight's position vector and the lights and the spotlight's direction vector and the cutoff angle. Float cutoff? Does that just go? I'm a little confused. A little confused if that's oh and then it's capital O, excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Next, we pass the appropriate values to the shaders. Uh, L uniform, camera position, camera front. Light position, light spot, dir. Don't we already do that? I'm confused. Don't we already do that? I mean, come on. Light, dir. View position. 
Light position location. Light spot or location. Okay, I'm confused. Where's the Okay, so it does get to the source code there, so let's not worry about that just yet. Okay, so as you can see, we're not setting an angle for the cutoff value, but calculate the cosine value based on an angle and pass the cosine result to the fragment shader. The reason for this, oh, this must be talking about this right here. Okay, for this, the reason for this is that in the fragment shader, we're calculating the dot product between the light dirt and the spot dirt vector, right. And the dot product returns a cosine value and not an angle, so we can't directly compare an angle with a sine cosine value. To retrieve the angle, we then have to calculate the inverse cosine of the dot product's result, which is an expensive operation. You're telling me. I already knew that. So to save some performance, we calculate the cosine value of a given cutoff angle and pass this result to the fragment shader. Since both angles are now represented as cosines, we can directly compare them without any expensive operations. Oh, that's a very smart idea. Uh, now what's left to do is calculate the theta value and compare this with the cutoff value to determine if we're inside or outside the spotlight. Yes. Ba -da -ba -da, ba -ba -da. So float theta equals dot. Okay, so this is all going to be inside the fragment shader. This is just amazing. This whole idea of the shaders executing code is just... That's um, amazing to me because it just is. We first calculate the dot product between the light dir vector and the negated direction vector. Light dir, negated direction vector. Negated because we want the vectors to point towards the light source instead of from. Be sure to normalize all the relevant vectors. Yeah, I saw that. Um, you might be wondering why there is a greater than sign instead of a less than sign in the if guard. Shouldn't theta be smaller than the light's cut off to be inside the spotlight? That is right, but don't forget angle values are represented in cosine values, and an angle of zero is represented as the cosine value of one, while an angle of 90 is represented as the cosine value of zero. You can see here. That's the cosine graph. Oh, great. Now you can see that the closer the cosine value is to one, the smaller its angle. Now it makes sense why theta needs to be larger than the cutoff value. The cutoff value is currently set at the cosine of 12.5, which is equal to 0 0.9978. So a cosine theta value between, what? Oh, I see, right, because there's very little difference between that. Okay, great, yeah. Running the application results in a spotlight that only lights the fragments that are directly inside the cone of the spotlight looks something like this. Okay, I gotta see that. Hold on. I gotta, I, more than one. Oh, I gotta see that. I gotta see that. Okay, wait. Where do we go? Okay, so we gotta modify the code. Modify the fragment shader. Ah, the video is done. Uploading. Processing done. Click publish to make your video live. I thought I already did. I thought I already published. Okay, and we'll throw that on Facebook in a little bit. Good, 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 good. Crucifixion? Good. Line on the left, one cross each. <laughs> okay, what, where did I go just there? I don't know. Okay, so material, light. Right, so what are we looking at in the fragment shader? Uh, this bad boy. Let's get him out here. Come on. There we go. Okay, so... Wait, material? Oh, right, okay, I forgot about that. <laughs> Direction, position, cutoff, constant, linear, quadratic, ambient, diffuse, specular. Right, right, right. Okay, if you got to be particular about all that stuff, sure. And then this, the only way to tell on this is to make it like this, a little bigger. Okay, and that's still over there. Hold on a minute. Okay, so ambient, lighter. Oh, wow, what the heck? Okay, I'm just going to copy this whole thing, because this is all. Lighter, normalize, check if lighting is inside the spotlight cone. Oh, I see, so it's taking all that and putting it inside this if, so it's not going to do. So if, that, otherwise, just that, which is, yeah, okay, so let's just take this. This is our new main, so it's going to replace everything in here, just like this. There's no place like home. There's no place like greater than light dot cutoff is greater than theta. <laughs> or the other way around. Does that sound? I don't know what I'm 
doing? Hey, we made it 10 minutes in without really coughing. That's good. Okay, so we got all that stuff looks right. That's the fragment shader. So we know the fragment shader is pretty good right now. And then this is the code, and we had to pass in um, something, something, something. Where is it at? That's container view, light view. Those looks good. Diffuse specular emission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, current frame. Lighting. Okay, what looks? Oh, there's the cutoff right there. So that needs to go in. Uh, let's make sure that lighting shader just right under there. Light direction, view pause. Wait, are we missing? Nope, it's also got the position director. Position, direction, cutoff, and view pause. Um, so it's just got direction and view pause. So position and cutoff. We need those. Ba -da -ba -da, ba -ba -ba. So position and cutoff, let's just put those in. Boom! And we don't need two of position, direction, cutoff, and view pause. Well, there's, there's a... Ah, I knew there was another one right there, the direction. Okay. It was sneaking in there. Light spot under location, is that what that is? Oh, I have to do these two. Okay, so so pause location, spot der location, spot cutoff. Okay, so we got just these two is what we need right there. Let's cut those out. Whoops, don't go too far. Um, is this done? Are we done? No threats detected. Well, I'm just shocked. So what are we doing? Taking this one out. Spot dirt location, spot cutoff, and view pause. Spot look pause, spot dirt. Oh, are we missing one? Did I overwrite one and take it out? Whoops. Whoops. Alright, I guess we're including this guy. Okay, that's interesting. Everything else looks good. This looks good now. Okay. Save that, compile, run the program. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And you can move the camera. And the light moves with the camera. I didn't realize that. That's cool. That is funky cool. Boy, shaders are cool. <laughs> All right. That's that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. It's quite a little spotlight there. Wow. Nice. Okay, so that's really cool. And let me look at that fragment shader again because that's the whole where it's all done. So we have the yeah. Light direction equals normalized light position minus the fragment position. Theta equals dot light or normalized light direction, right? Dot Oh, the dot product between those two. That is a handy little function right there. So if theta is greater than light dot cutoff, um, yeah, which is actually light dot cutoff right here. So it's throwing in this amount. Oh, I see. This is the, uh, so this would be your, uh, okay, your ra radius of your spotlight. Kind of it's viewing cone. Okay. So if theta is greater than light dot cutoff, where did it get that light dot cutoff right there? So where does it get that from? Light dot cutoff? from just that right there. Interesting. But how does that... Hmm. 
Maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, let's go look at it again. We first calculate the dot product between the light dirt vector and the negated direction vector. Negated because we want the vectors to point towards the light source and the from. Be sure to normalize all the relevant vectors. You might be wondering whether this is that instead of that in the if card. Should it be smaller than the light cutoff inside? Shouldn't theta be smaller than the light's cutoff value to be... Oh, the cutoff value. So what it actually is is... Okay, right. Right. So theta is the angle between the light dirt vector and the spot dirt vector. So that is the cutoff value. So, okay, I'm understanding that now. So what you're doing is you're saying, right here, you're sending the cutoff out. So I can just increase this by just a little bit and get a wider angle. Let's try it. Let's try it, I'm playing around. There's a much wider angle, see? So, because, oh, and it does still retain the other shininess, but only when it's in the, only when it's in the light, right? Oh, that's wicked cool. That's double duty light shading right there. So that's cool. I got that now. So here's your width of your light, like in a radius. And then it takes that value. And that's how it gets right into here. It's already there. It's already passed in there, which is perfect. And then it compares. So that is really interesting to wrap your mind around. The fact that you send a value into a shader that way even inside a structure of a shader wow like you can populate these fields from within your program using these little functions that's just funky and cool and funky okay so let's keep going we're on the flash side we got down here we're already down to here Okay, you can find the full source curve. Phase. It looks a bit fake, though, mostly because the spotlight has hard edges. Oh, wherever a fragment reaches the edges, the spotlight cone is shut down completely instead of with a nice, smooth fade. Oh, this is going to be interesting. A realistic spotlight would reduce the light gradually, okay, to create the effect of a smoothly edged spotlight. We want to simulate a spotlight having an inner and outer cone. Excuse me. inner and outer cone, really? We can set the inner cone as the cone defined in the previous section, but we also want an outer cone that gradually dims the light from the inner to the edges of the outer. Oh, that's cool. To create an outer cone, we simply define another cosine value that represents the angle between the spotlight's direction vector and the outer cone's vector, so that'll increase the radius. Then, if a fragment is between the inner and the outer cone, it should calculate an intensity value between 0 and 1. If the fragment is inside the inner cone, its intensity is equal to 1 and 0 if the fragment is outside the outer cone. Right. We can calculate such a value using the following formula. Here, epsilon is the cosine difference between the inner and the outer cone. Epsilon equals... The resulting I value is then the intensity of the spotlight at the current fragment. It's a bit hard to visualize how this formula actually works, so let's try it out a few sample values. Oh. The heck, this is not helping. <laughs> As you can see, we're basically interpolating between the outer cosine and inner cosine based on that. helps me better right there. That's fine. You just had to say that. You didn't really have to show me that big old table there. That's probably not confusing if I read it slowly. But okay, if you don't, if you still don't see really what's going on, don't worry. You can simply take the formula for granted and return here when you're much older and wiser. <laughs> Since we now have an intensity value that is either negative when outside the spotlight, higher than 1 when inside the inner cone, and somewhere in between around the edges, if we prom properly clamp the values, we don't need an if-else if in the fragment shader anymore, and we can simply multiply the light components with a calculated intensity value. Say what? I thought we would need another if. Let's see, if theta is greater than light cutoff. Okay, theta equals dot light dirt normal. Epsilon equals light cutoff minus light outer cutoff. 
Intensity equals clamp theta minus light cutoff epsilon zero one. Clamp. Clamp theta minus light cutoff divided by epsilon zero and one. Oh, it's clamping it. That's interesting. We'll leave ambient unaffected, so we always have a little light. Diffuse times intensity, specular times intensity. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Note that we use the clamp function that clamps its first argument between the values 0 and 1. This makes sure the intensity values won't end up outside 0 to 1. Make sure you add the outer cutoff value uh, uh -huh, to the light structure. Okay, <laughs> to the light structure. I'm th sitting here thinking, add it to what? You know, And set its uniform value in the application. For the following image, an inner cutoff angle of 12 and an outer cutoff angle of 17 was used. Oh, so I need to... Oh, that's much better. Play around with your inner and outer cutoff angles and try to create a spotlight that better suits your needs. You can find the source code of the application here and the fragment source code here. Such a flashlight spotlight type of lamp is perfect for horror games and combined with directional point lights, the environment will really start to light up. In the next tutorial, we'll combine all the lights and tricks we've discussed so far. Cool. So, all right, let's put together this little application dude. Let's get our fragment shader in line first, since that seems to be my favorite thing to start with here. Position, direction, cutoff, outer cutoff. There we go. Outer cut off. Constant linear quadratic, ambient diffuse, specular. Okay. So and then they've taken everything outside of this whole if and put it all back to what it was before, kind of. So let's just recopy all this stuff. Yeah, we're redoing the main again. Sorry. Replacing the main. Boop, boop, save. And so ambient equals light ambient times right times all that fun stuff. This is really cool. Uh, when I come back and redo this, and revisit this. This is going to be some fun stuff to play around with and do those uh, exercises with, if not already. Uh, okay, so where are we at? So we basically just had to put in a few variables and, and a calculation, I think is all that was. Uh, here's the outer cutoff, so that needs to go in. Light spot, outer cutoff location, just underneath the cutoff. Right here, it's fine. And let's go back to twelve point five for this so we can, yeah. I think that's all we have to do. Um, bum, bum. Yeah, that's it. Okay, great. So, save, compile, run. Oh, that is sweet. That is sweet. Don't you love that? You gotta love that. That is really sweet. And you know, I just love that that happens in the fragment shader here. Views, normalize, all that specular, okay, spotlight, soft edges, theta equals dot, lighter, normalize light direction, epsilon, okay, equals light cutoff minus light outer cutoff. So there's your there's your extension, and then intensity equals clamp, theta, okay, minus light outer cutoff divided by epsilon. Clamp it from zero to one, right? Diffuse times in its specular. Okay, attenuation, and then it does the attenuation. That is so cool. That is just something to wrap your mind around. It's just craziness, folks. Okay. All right, we hit 24 minutes. That's enough. Thanks for tuning in.